This video serves as a deep dive into the public figure and influencer life plus Cindy, formerly known as Pleasant Sims. It serves to provide a comprehensive guide for anyone who might be new to her channel, as well as point out some of the main criticisms of her. It also discusses the impact of her content on her audience and vice versa. Since including every important point of the situation made this video quite long, feel free to skip around the highlighted chapters or sections of the video that interest you. Starting from the beginning, who is Life Plus Cindy? Cindy Arnell is an American YouTuber born on May 13, 1983. Cindy entered the public consciousness in 2018 with her blog and YouTube channel called Pleasant Sims. Both sites were focused on the Sims game series, specifically The Sims 2. Cindy became popular thanks to her relaxing, down to earth let's plays and live streams, her creative gameplay rules, and helpful articles. She hasn't revealed her face until December 16, 2018 when she thanked her viewers for 1,000 subscribers. In those early days, her audience knew little about Cindy besides the fact she worked as a medical coder, lived in Colorado with her husband Andrew, who was referred to as Mr. Pleasant and wanted to stay anonymous, and was passionate about The Sims 2. Cindy was beloved for her joyful, relatable personality and her southern charm. She was fairly consistent and reliable at this time and even ended up leaving her day job to pursue YouTube full-time as she became more successful. Near the end of 2019, Cindy began focusing more on reaction and tutorial-style videos, set on gaining more views, even though Cindy slowly became known for her inconsistency in live streaming. Shutting down her channel memberships or Patreon and putting them back up as well as frequently going on hiatuses, her audience was understanding. As Cindy left her day job in July 2020 to focus on YouTube full-time, she began focusing more on Randy Sims 4 reactions and less on Let's Plays which were the core of her channel. The earliest backlash she got from her audience was a reaction to her video where she discussed her moving away from the beloved Let's Plays because they did not get enough views. Smaller controversies followed, which is most definitely a part of being a human being on social media and somewhat unavoidable, but I'll let you judge that for yourself. The first controversy Cindy got herself into was her calling out Savannah Chapman, aka Kit Kat Simmer for copying Cindy's content on her website in August 2020. Cindy was sent this website by an anonymous source and posted a tweet about it, causing her fans to harass the autistic girl who created the website. While autism is not an excuse to plagiarize, some members of Cindy's audience did not appreciate calling the girl out in such a public manner since no one else knew about the website besides her and a couple of people. In the common Cindy manner, she briefly left Twitter and the internet to avoid having to face the backlash. In January 2022, Cindy got into hot water for allegedly bullying minors and autistic members of her Discord server together with her mods. The issue arose because of these screenshots where Cindy and her mods discuss an annoying member of their community who has been spamming the page with their pictures. This community member was proven to be a 17-year-old, and they also confirmed they had Asperger's. I am genuinely not clear on if this is the same person as in the previous controversy, or just another autistic member of the community, which made them struggle with social cues and understanding what is spamming and what isn't. While most of Cindy's audience did not find this controversy very problematic, many people found Cindy's handling of the entire situation, as well as her and her mods bitchy, mean attitude in the whole situation in poor taste. Even though not many people truly cancelled Cindy and she only received some backlash, instead of apologizing, Cindy made a dramatic goodbye post titled Cancelled on her blog, where we can see some first signs of her mental health issues with how over-the-top her reaction to the situation is. Cindy confirms that she apologized to the said community member, and they parted on good terms, but she could not handle people calling her out on this behavior, using over-the-top terms like a mob coming for my blood and such. She also claims there has been a person online who's been trying to cancel her for years, which was someone she previously publicly exposed as well, and even made an entire website about. Cindy ended the post with, quote I am leaving the Sims community and YouTube for good, you cannot imagine the pain this causes me, my reputation cannot recover, 
I've been so traumatized and humiliated that I will never feel safe in this space again. Of course, Cindy returned, at the end of the day, this controversy is the smallest of hers and is sometimes made out to be more than it was, Cindy did not handle it in a very adult manner, especially not for someone in their late 30s, but she also didn't specifically attack the community member because they were autistic or young, still, it made people think on how she communicates with her mods in private about others, and it made people reconsider her always positive, sweet personality. The first true sign of her vulnerability on YouTube and her opening up about her personal life to her audience was in March 2021, when she posted her video called Why I Wear Wigs, What I Really Look Like, Head Reveal, PCOS, where she explained her struggles with polycystic ovarian syndrome, balding, infertility, weight gain and more. In the video, she threw away her wigs, saying she refuses to hide anymore and decided to fight for her health and happiness. I'm so tired of hiding who I really am, wearing costumes, and I just want to be free. So this is my way of getting my freedom back, is I'm going to explain why I wear wigs, and then I'm going to show you what I look like without my wig, and then I'm going to throw my wig away forever. I suffer from a condition called PCOS, or polycystic ovarian syndrome. This is a horrible chronic illness that I would not wish upon anyone. It causes you to have higher than normal male hormones, so I have higher androgens than a normal woman would have. This causes a whole host of symptoms. Not every woman has every single symptom of PCOS, but I have almost all of them. The one that has been most devastating to me is the loss of my hair, the hair on my head. And I am just going to be free, whatever that means. However I look, um, I'm going to accept it. And, um, you know, if other people don't accept it, that's their problem, not mine. Um, I'm also not going to be wearing makeup um, on my videos or streams anymore. Um, I am just going to be 100% real, 100% authentic, and this is what I look like. So I am going to take the wig off now. Um, here it goes. The <laughs> moment you've been waiting for. So here is what I look like. Um, so this is the top, and you can see that it's very thin. It's very thin up here. And this is obviously not a professional haircut. This is a <laughs> Mr. Pleasant special. Um, <laughs> he shaved my head. It's like I'm starting to get a little bit of a mullet back here, I think. <laughs> but I just want to grow it out, and however it looks, that's, how, that's just what I look like. I can't change that. I can't present anything else to the world anymore. It's just become too much of a burden on me to just to wear these wigs and makeup and pretend like I'm someone I'm not. It just, I can't do it anymore. The video was met with a large amount of love, understanding, and praise for Cindy's honesty and raw vulnerability. From that day, Cindy appeared in her videos without wigs, and even more cemented her status of a relatable human content creator in the sea of fake influencers. Eventually, Cindy stopped posting on her Pleasant Sims channel for various reasons. Her last Twitch live stream was on December 2012 and her last Sims video was published in December 2021, besides the one-off reaction video in July 2022. So, where did Cindy go? Her new personal channel, Life Plus Cindy, where she's been making videos near the end of her Pleasant Sims era as well. The channel was created on 6th of April 2021 and went through several name changes, from Pleasantly Cindy, to Cindy Plus Andrew, to finally Life Plus Cindy. This vlogging and lifestyle channel was to let her now very tight-knit and interested audience glance into her personal life and get more of her personality. At the beginning, the channel was supposed to be more of a couple's channel, where Andrew, Cindy's husband of over 10 years who has been very much against even being shown on the camera before, was supposed to make cooking videos, as well as tasting videos with Cindy. The little known fact is that the channel was scrubbed and renamed after at the end of one of the first videos, Cindy forgot to cut out a clip where she asks Andrew how do I say I need money? And Andrew replies with, I don't know, just say it. This was seen only by a handful of people and there is nothing but word of mouth evidence for this. But it is known that Cindy deleted all her videos after and waited some time before rebranding as Life Plus Cindy. Currently, the oldest video on the channel is the last podcast on the left live, ending up drunk in the bathroom, from June 2021, 
which is a pretty standard day in a life vlog from Cindy's life. Once again, the response to this video was very positive, with people praising Cindy's honesty, rawness, and vulnerability. After that, Cindy's channel also began focusing on her PCOS weight loss and health journey. In the coming months, Cindy went through several diets, with each of them supposedly being the one miracle cure for her weight loss. She first swore by calorie counting. Now I have tried every diet under the fucking sun. Everyone, everyone you can think of. Weight Watchers, Keto, Low Carb, Plant Based, Slim Fast, like every stupid ass diet you can think of. I have tried it and I have failed at it, or it has failed me rather. The only way I've ever been able to lose weight is counting calories. Keto. And I realize that the time has come that I need to make a change to my diet because counting calories can only take you so far when you have PCOS, especially when you have insulin resistant PCOS like I do. So I made the change and I switched to a low carb ketogenic diet and that got me back on track. Uh, as soon as I did that, I immediately lost two pounds and I feel so much better. So I know this was the right thing to do um, for me personally. Then Whole30, Paleo. I decided that I'm gonna do the thing that has worked best for me in the past I'm not necessarily doing keto, but I'm also not gonna eat sugar and carbs. And I decided that I'm going to do more of a paleo-ish diet. I'm still gonna try to keep my carbs low. I am dropping dairy, which is very bad for women with PCOS because it's inflammatory. So I will not be having any dairy. It's gonna be more like a low carb paleo diet that I'm switching to. Cause I just wasn't feeling good on keto. I thought that I could go back and do calorie counting, but that did not work for me. And I was just feeling terrible on keto. Besides that, Cindy also shared her desire to have children, which was a surprise to many, considering she was very outspoken in her live streams that passed about her loving her child-free life. Cindy explained that because of her lowered fertility caused by her PCOS, as well as her weight and age, she convinced herself she did not want children since she thought she simply couldn't have them, but her biological clock started ticking. So she and her husband began trying and conceived in early 2022. She shared the happy news on 6th of June 2022, after various fertility treatments. Hey guys, I'm pregnant! <laughs> Unfortunately, Cindy went into preterm labor at 20 weeks and ended up losing her son August, which she shared in a heartbreaking I lost the baby at 20 weeks after going into preterm labor video on 28th of July 2022. After this, she went understandably radio silent until November 28th, 2022. Hi, how are you? I've missed you so much. Thank you for standing by and waiting on me to be ready to come back to YouTube. And here I am. Where she appeared looking significantly different and talked about her dealing with the loss of her child, life, and her weight loss thanks to the carnivore diet. After this, Cindy became focused on daily vlogs again, often sharing her budget carnival meals and getting more into witchy topics as well as homemade soap making and such. In the meantime, she and Andrew continued to try for a baby again, while the majority of her audience was still very positive and supportive after the wave of empathy from the miscarriage video. Slowly, some began criticizing Cindy's incorrect use of the carnival diet and intermittent fasting. In short, Cindy wouldn't consume the organ meats which are necessary for obtaining all the nutrients and vitamins, and would only take a liver extract capsule together with other supplements. We have not seen Cindy eat an organ meat or bone broth in a single of her videos, causing slowly growing concern. Her diet would also be extremely lacking in variety, which is another important factor when considering such a restricting diet. It's gonna be my one and only meal of the day. Normally I do not do like recipes, I just eat literally like a hunk of meat that I've cooked. So I'll do like steak, hamburger patties, or chuck roast. From keto to carnivore. So I was doing, whenever I had my pregnancy, I was eating so horrible. I was eating McDonald's almost every single day when I was pregnant and that cannot be healthy for you or a baby in any way, shape or form. I feel so good when I eat a steak that that's the only thing I want to eat. Why would I eat anything else? It doesn't even appeal to me. Um, and so it's ne it's not boring to me at all. I never get tired of eating steak, roast, and burgers. I can just eat those three foods and I don't think I would ever get tired of it. She also extended her fasting windows to unsafe lengths to speed up her weight loss, clearly more focused on her looks and quick weight loss instead of her health. Whether it was caused by the trauma of her loss or simply her own choice and irresponsibility, her disordered eating is starting to take shape at this time. 
and her diet only becomes more concerning as time goes on, even though Cindy repeats often at this time that she is not a doctor and no one should take her diet as an example, there is a valid concern that her impressionable, loyal audience would take the incorrect diet that was by Cindy's own words working miracles on her shedding pounds as an example and want to receive the same results. Cindy stayed fairly consistent at this time, posting on every day of Vlogmas and after, until the event which changed her channel and perhaps brought in a large portion of her new audience, which was The video published on February 6, 2023, titled My Life Is Over sent shockwaves through Cindy's community. See, before this video, Cindy and Andrew's relationship was nothing short of a perfect fairy tale, the two were married since 2012, and met my pure coincidence when Andrew delivered a pizza to Cindy who was at the time struggling after separating from her first husband, Chad, Andrew has been the love of her life since, he supported her in all she did, and they were both happy with the way things were. Or so it seemed, in the shocking and heartbreaking video, Cindy revealed many, many new facts, which went completely against the image of a sweet, genuine persona she built. We learnt, from Cindy's own words that she has admittedly abused Andrew for years, had untreated and out of control borderline personality disorder, and he had finally had enough and left. There are a lot of things that I don't show you guys or tell you guys because I wanted my channel to be positive and uplifting, but I am mentally ill and I have a personality disorder that completely destroys everything I touch. And now it's destroyed my marriage and I have ran off. The only man who has ever loved me or stood by me for any period of time. I don't want you to think that Andrew is a bad person or a bad husband or a bad man because he's not. He is a beautiful, compassionate, kind, empathetic human being who um, has finally reached his limit and been pushed over the edge. I have not been um, a great wife to him. I have a lot of problems that stem from a trauma that I cannot heal and he cannot help me to heal it either and he's had enough of trying and I do not blame him one bit, okay? He's a good man and I um, destroyed him. So I have put him into the role of a pseudo parent because I keep trying to get the love that I didn't get as a child from my parents and I keep trying to get it from him and it's sick and it's wrong and um, he can't take it anymore and I don't blame him, I don't blame him. Even though it was never well known, Cindy did share that she had BPD with her audience before, and it was quite understandable when looking at her black and white thinking when it came to her controversies, her dramatic exits, constant hiatuses and inconsistency, but besides that, Cindy has painted her life with Andrew as perfect, which would be totally understandable, if relatability and genuineness wasn't the core of her appeal. Cindy shares many personal details in this video, from her parentifying Andrew, to him begging her to go to therapy and get help for years, which she refused. She also shares that she threatened to unlive herself after he left to get him back to the house and had cops called on her. I made a fool of myself in front of everyone. I had the cops called on me. I threw myself on the front of his car to prevent him from leaving after manipulating him to come back here by telling him I was going to kill myself. Yes, that is the kind of fucked up things that I do. No matter the whiplash, Cindy's audience was understanding, and the point of her channel from then on became starting over and healing, having YouTube as her only outlet and support network, Cindy posted unfiltered videos where she struggles to digest the separation and discussed her possible new life as a newly single woman in her late 30s living alone for the first time ever, with the help of her audience, who gladly sent donations to a struggling woman trying to get on her feet, because many have gone through similar hardship, Cindy started therapy, albeit too little too late and began working on her independence by getting herself her own car and doing things by herself that she would have previously relied on Andrew with. In these following videos, certain patterns began rearing their ugly head though, and some started to get skeptical. Most people's criticisms at this point came from a place of feeling like the person they knew before the video was not real, though there were signs of Cindy being far too dependent on Andrew, from him cooking her dinners after coming from work when she used to just stream Sims all day to her admitting he does all the adult things for her, the idea of the sweet, genuine, pleasant Cindy abusing and traumatizing her partner were too much to just skip over, either way. Cindy was slowly inching to getting better, even if she hopped between respecting Andrew's wish of not contacting him and contacting him, 
as well as between wanting to be independent and wanting her old life back. I have to start trying to imagine a new future for myself, so I have let myself start to imagine what it might be like to actually truly live on my own, to go back home, get an apartment, and I, I'm not saying this out of grief and pain, I'm saying this out of practicality because I'm a very practical person and I need to think about these things. Um, like what it would be like to go home, find an apartment, get my own car, have my own life, um, date other people, make new friends, and I have to tell you that I'm not as upset about it as I was before. Like I'm starting to think it might be a real possibility. Right now, my only focus is just working on myself as best I can. And today hurts less than yesterday and every day before that. And um, today's the first day that I felt kind of okay. And I actually think that not talking to him at all, having no contact is less painful than the little tiny scraps of contact I was getting before, you know, the like just sitting around waiting on him to text me one time a day. I haven't heard from him in a little while. I don't know if he's working or what. So I have suggested to him and he has not confirmed if he agrees with this or not, that maybe we should like try to meet up once a week, even if it's just like for an hour or two at the park, at a coffee shop, something like that, you know, to just try to see if we can start to slowly rebuild our trust up if he wants to. I just went crazy and I texted Andrew and I called him at work. Like I called his work okay which is crazy and I should not have done that and I'm surprised he even talked to me at all after that um I'm really surprised because I thought he was gonna be like really angry with me because obviously I caught him off guard he answered the phone when I called his work if he didn't answer I was just gonna hang up and I know this is crazy obsessive behavior okay this is part of my mental illness that I'm trying to deal with I'm just telling you my experience of what I did when I was in a really dark downward spiral last night people cheered her up and empathized with her Cindy's diet also became worse and worse at this time and while it was partly understandable because of her stressful situation and depression, she continued to share it and point out she was losing weight, possibly influencing her extremely loyal and parasocial audience in a bad way. Um, I have lost a lot of weight, and it has not been in a healthy way. I've hardly eaten anything over the past week. Oh, it's been over a week now. It's been eight days. I have, like, eaten one or a half of a burger patty a night just to get my stomach to shut up, and that's been it. So, I do not recommend anybody do that, but I will tell you that I weigh myself and I'm down to 159 pounds. So I'm not sad that I'm down to 159 pounds, that is my lowest weight that I have been in 15 years. So, I feel good about that. I know I didn't do it in a good way, like, I guess, no, I'm not gonna say that, I'm not gonna say that, it's not healthy, don't do it, okay. Then, when things were just looking up, they got worse once again. From going to therapy, healing, and becoming her own person, Cindy gave her audience another shock when she posted a video on March 14, 2023 after another long, uninst hiatus. Y'all, we're about to do something crazy. So, Andrew just told me, we just went out to lunch together, and he said, let's get in the car right now and go to Arkansas. And I said, okay, let's go. So we're going. As you can see, in this video, Cindy who has said she wanted to work on herself and her independence is suddenly back in the passenger's seat of the car and by Andrew's side. What's worse, both have decided to impulsively move back to Arkansas, something they believe will heal their relationship and give them a new start. At this point, many of Cindy's ex-fans began questioning her decisions, especially since so many warned her to not rush things, but because Cindy has been known to strictly monitor her comments and never allow any criticism or negativity. It was hard for them to express their opinions and the enabling toxic positivity still prevailed. Many still supported Cindy in this decision, like they always did, and wished her and Andrew luck in starting over. After a few vlogs of her and Andrew enjoying Arkansas and house hunting, things unraveled even further. To the shock of everyone, another teary video of Cindy's life falling apart appeared titled My Life Is Over Part 2, he left for good and we're not getting back together, where Cindy's story completely changes and takes new direction. She reveals that she was not the one at fault for their failed relationship, mostly at least, but that it was because Andrew has been cheating on her and just disappeared out of their apartment, telling her not to contact him again. It said that he has cheated on me several times um, during our marriage and I never knew. <laughs> and that he could not live with that guilt and he doesn't think that I should forgive him and I agree I, I don't I don't think I can forgive that I mean I can't I can't forgive that she also reveals it was not the first time they've had similar issues even after claiming she will not air his personal business on the internet 
Drunk Cindy explains they had a rough patch in 2013 because of Andrew's online cheating, porn addiction, and reveals he has avoidant personality disorder. I don't really feel it's my place to talk about it, so I won't, but we'll just say it involves... I can't even say what it involves, I'm sure you can guess. That's something that we've had an issue with for a long time, but I never knew that it went into the real world. I never knew that he had sex with another woman, and that is what he told me. That it happened right before I got pregnant. Now I will not be taking him back, even if he wanted to, but he doesn't. This is the second time he's left since we've been here. I vlogged the first time, but I lied to you about it. Um, he's sick. He has a real fucking problem, and I hope he gets help for it. I really do. He, he had a lot of time to try and change, to get into therapy, to fix himself, and he didn't do that. He just wants to continue the way he is, I guess. That is fucking avoidant personality disorder, is what Andrew has, and it is very apparent to me. Suddenly, Andrew turns out to be the villain of the story with Cindy's own serious mistakes fading behind the hatred of his, and Cindy is forced to start again. In the following vlogs, she struggles to get over Andrew, her mental health deteriorates even more, and her eating habits begin wearing far into eating disorder territory. Cindy barely eats and when she does, it is often nothing but McDonald's burger patty and cheese. Her less than ideal state is somewhat understandable, considering her life has been falling apart for the past few months, but at this point, Every vlog becomes a mental breakdown on film, a trauma porn of sort, and some people start getting uncomfortable with the idea of Cindy exploiting her own mental illness on the internet, considering her new videos get much bigger views than the regular old vlogs. Her family is also nowhere to be seen, since Cindy reiterated that she is not ready to let them know about what happened, even though being close to them was one of the reasons she wanted to move to Arkansas. Cindy tries to get together with old and new friends and move on but still struggles, with YouTube being her only support network, the cult-like portion of her audience only steps up, enabling Cindy in anything she does, sending her anything she covertly mentions she needs in videos, and not allowing any criticism of her whatsoever in fear of damaging her already vulnerable psyche, while many begin to realize her hypocrisy, her lack of actual focus on her mental health, and her promoting dangerous seating. I decided to get in the car. And I'm really hungry. It's five o'clock. I haven't eaten anything in a long time. I, not today. I don't even remember if I ate anything yesterday. So I'm driving to McDonald's to get a quarter pounder, which I eat without the bun, and a Diet Coke. I've eaten anything in over 48 hours. I need to have some food today. I just, I have had no appetite at all, as I'm sure you can understand. Still just have no appetite, okay? I don't want to eat anything. I'm just eating because I know my body needs sustenance right now. I mean, that's the best I can do to try to take care of myself in this moment. I'm just going to salt and pepper these and eat them with some butter. I'll eat as many of them as I can choke down. I know this is not a lot of food, but I'm going through a lot of emotional distress right now. So, you know, big meals aren't really a priority for me. I know I need to eat more. I'm going to eat this, and if I'm able to get this down, I'll have another one. 153.2! I've lost a total of 79 pounds. My highest weight was 232 and I'm down to 153.2. So I'm like 0.3 pounds away from losing 80 pounds. I'm really, really proud of myself, y'all. I have worked so hard at this. First thing I'm gonna do today is plan out my fasting schedule for the week. So I've been using this new app. It's called uh, Body Fast. Like it has the, the normal ones like OMAD and 16-8 and stuff. But it also has this one that I've been doing called Power Week, Lose, lose Weight Faster. So this is what it kind of looks like. Let me see if I can get it to focus. So you can see the fasting periods, they vary, and then you'll have like one full day of fasting. And it works really well for me. I was able to pretty much stick to it last week, except for the couple times when I broke my fast with alcohol. So I have a leftover McDonald's McDouble in the fridge, and that's what I'm going to eat for lunch today. So I'm going to go ahead and eat that now before I get started, just to give me a little energy. Drinking, which she admits she is becoming dependent on. I have to be honest with you guys right now. I mean, I don't have to be honest with you, but I'm going to be. I have developed what I believe to be the early stages of a drinking problem. And lifestyle habits. People also worry about the possibility of Cinder getting together with Andrew once again only for her to be hurt once more. Since the last time she claimed she strived for independence, it was not entirely true. I sent him an email, and I should not have done that, I know, that's bad, but it's just I had all these things that I wanted to say, and I honestly didn't think he would read it or reply. But I sent him an email telling him everything 
that I felt, I know it was a mistake, and now I'm dealing with the repercussions of that action. Like 11 o'clock the next day in the morning, he sent me an email back and he said the most beautiful things to me, how he felt about me and our relationship and everything that he had done. And it really made me struggle. I thought if he would have said those things to my face, I wouldn't have been able to resist it. I would have probably just taken him back I don't feel like that now, but it, there was a moment of weakness there because I can't, I can't help it. I'm still like really in love with him. I do go back and forth in my mind. You know, I have those moments of maybe I could take him back, but I'm not feeling like that now, so don't worry. Another, this time larger, controversy which caused Cindy to once again react with the abrupt privating of her entire channel and running away from the internet was the lunch with B plus sad unpacking books plus going back on meds, published on April 22, 2023, and is now conveniently removed. In this vlog, Cindy meets her friend B in a Mexican restaurant, where they joke about the food, laugh at the pronunciation, bother the waitresses about the pronunciation of words while in an obvious earshot of their giggling, and make insensitive jokes about sending the plate of food Cindy will not eat to starving children in Ethiopia. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all the garbage. What is that? That's a uh, vulva. 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 I would not say vulva. Vulva. A la vida. Uh, that means something of life. Vulva of life. <laughs> Excuse Thank me. Can you, you. pronounce this? I'm oh, sorry. He whipped out that Spanish. I said, yeah. I said the one line. I no, como se dice? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They tell you, they just tell you, they just give you free Spanish lessons. I know. Like we should just come here and learn Spanish. It's sizzling. Yum. All right, y'all. I'm starving. This is all I'm gonna eat today, probably. I ate all the meat out of it. And I ate the middle of my plate with the guacamole and sour cream and cheese. Yeah, I'm going to throw it away. Is that what you asked me? Kind of wasting food. I'm wasting food. I'm sure I'll get reamed for that in the comments. People yeah, don't worry. It. She's going to mail it to Ethiopia. I'm going to put it in envelopes and mail it to Ethiopia and then everybody <coughs> can be happy. Understandably. Cindy received much larger backlash for this video and the casual racism in it, but still, many people defended her, claiming people are overly sensitive these days, cancel everyone for no reason, and she was not racist, a common right-wing talking points, by the way, there is much more behind her comments than them being just stupid jokes, but even if one does not believe they were racist or microaggressions, they were ignorant in the least and went against the image of progressive woman Cindy claimed to be before. The point that intent does not equal impact is also important to bring out, something her fans and Cindy herself refused to acknowledge. Refusing to truly take responsibility and only using empty words started to become a regular occurrence with Cindy. Her apology, after she finally came back again, was lukewarm and not very serious, and packaged in another dramatic I am leaving YouTube for good statement. Okay, so the first thing I want to address is uh, people are calling me a racist, which is very, very fucking hurtful. Um, I'm not a racist. So uh, when B and I were in the Mexican restaurant, we were joking around and laughing at ourselves not being able to pronounce the words. Like we had no intention to mock anybody or any culture or any people. Like we, that was not the intention at all. And I'm so, so sorry if that offended or hurt anybody in any way. Um, I. We, that's not what we were doing. We were laughing at ourselves for being idiots and not being able to pronounce the words. Um, we were laughing at the picture because it was so low quality. You couldn't even tell like what was in there. That's why he said it looked like garbage, not because we think, we don't think Mexican food is garbage. Obviously we were eating there and we enjoyed it very much. Um, so we were just laughing at the picture and then laughing at ourselves because he tried to pronounce the word. It sounded like vulva. That's funny to me because I'm immature. So I laughed. And then um, he asked the waitress, or not the waitress, the other employee there, how to pronounce the word so that we wouldn't butcher it. We were trying to be respectful of the language and uh, she didn't speak English, so we didn't know that. Um, so he asked again and then our waitress came over and told us how to pronounce it. And that was it. Like we were just goofing around being obnoxious, but we truly did not mean to offend anybody or hurt anybody. If I thought that that would be taken as some kind of racism or mockery, obviously I never would have put that in the vlog. Um, it really surprised me. I'm sorry if I was ignorant. Um, I really, really didn't want to hurt anybody. And I'm also, I'm sorry that I haven't, um, that I haven't addressed this before, but the last couple days have been very, very difficult for me. And I was not in a place where I felt like I could uh, address anything or address anyone. So 
Um, yeah, we did not mean any harm by that. I am so, so sorry if that offended anybody. It, like, it hurts me to think that I could have hurt somebody with my words. Never my intention. We were just making fun of ourselves, goofing around, acting like a couple of idiots. Like, if you never goofed around and said something stupid with your friends, I don't know what to tell you. Um, there was another factor for her leaving YouTube though. Something that only coincidentally happened to go down at the same time as her Mexican restaurant video backlash. I was doxxed and um, somebody contacted my family. Um, sorry. Somebody contacted my family on Facebook, uh, parts of my family that I did not want um, to know these things. And I realized this is my fault. I am not trying to blame it on anybody else. This is all entirely 100% my fault because I made these videos. Um, I put them out there. But these people who, um, this per so this person came onto Reddit, said they were a family friend and that they were so concerned that I hadn't told my family yet that they were gonna tell my family. This person was no family friend, okay? First of all, they did not get any of the details of my family dynamic correct. They contacted members of my family that I have not talked to in years and didn't want to talk to, um, people that I never would have told these things to, and uh, they have caused a lot of problems for me in my personal life. Um, it frankly is scary to me and uh, humiliating to me. And I know, uh, I put this out there, obviously I did this to myself. I realize that I'm not trying to make myself into a victim. I'm just trying to explain like what happened. And um, so I had to have a lot of very difficult conversations with distant family members um, that never should have known about this. It is also important to point out that even though Cindy claims she was doxxed, she was not. While it is understandable for her to be shaken by someone online finding her personal information, she has been very reckless with showing her house numbers and addresses in the past, and the only thing the person allegedly did was message her family on Facebook, Cindy's address, or even her full name, though it is easily found thanks to the bizarre laws in the US were never spread around. This scared her and she mentioned it as another reason for why she thinks she will not return to YouTube for a very, very long time. She came back four days later. At the point of her my last appearance, apologies, explanations, and ending on my own terms live stream, a growing number of critics mostly wanted for Cindy to leave the internet and focus on her healing instead of filming herself having mental breakdowns, eating in an extremely unhealthy manner and manipulating her very trusting and loyal audience to get her what she wants. Meanwhile, her enabling audience continued to take responsibility off Cindy, claiming everyone was blowing things out of proportion, even going as far as acting like Cindy said what she said because B was with her and he was a bad influence on her. Finally, Cindy confirmed that she was going to actually focus on repairing her mental health and healing from the trauma Andrew put her through as well as learn to be truly independent. If I ever see myself coming back right now, I don't. And if I did, it would be like a members only kind of thing because um, I did not know that my videos were gonna get the the attention that they did. And <sighs> honestly, I was very naive about this whole situation. Like I didn't even know this whole reaction thing was even a thing. And it's just, it's, I don't know. It's not for me. Like I'm, I'm just not in a place mentally where I can handle this right now. I don't think I should share my personal life anymore. I've learned a very difficult lesson the fucking hard way, the same way I always have to learn everything, apparently. Thank you. I know people don't want me to go, and I part of me doesn't want to go either. I feel like as conflicted about this as I do about my marriage. Like, part of me doesn't want to go, part of me wants to stay, but part of me knows, like, the logical part of me knows I need to. Like, I need to, I need to be able to heal right now and get better, because obviously I'm not better. Um, I thought I was doing better, but obviously I'm doing way, way worse. And that's why another reason why I think YouTube may not be good for me because I do get extra, a lot of external validation from it and I'm not able to separate that. At this point in time, I'm not able to separate that from my own validation. You know what I mean? Um, I just, I, it becomes my identity and I, I'm just really bad at that. Only if things were that easy. Cindy came back four days later with a I don't give a shit attitude on a live stream pinning dozens of subscriber gifts, while drinking an alcoholic drink and admitting she's been drinking daily, her talk of YouTube and the internet not being good for her mental health was null, and unfortunately, as she struggled to get over Andrew and continuously broke their no contact in the coming days, things would get even worse. I'm in Colorado. I drove 14 hours all night long on no sleep to come to Colorado to see Andrew. The biggest ever backlash Cindy would receive came with the newest video titled I Drove All Night to Colorado to See Andrew published on May 23, 2023. This is where Cindy's behavior went from one of someone who is struggling mentally, unwilling to help themselves, 
and repeating the same mistakes over and over but still human, to actual dangerous irresponsibility. In this Corelli Manic video, Cindy explains she has driven 14 hours to Colorado to meet Andrew on a whim. I was like just trying to stay awake and it was probably dangerous, but I made it. I did not get in an accident. I made it perfectly fine. I drank a lot of coffee. When I got here, I was so hungry because I hadn't eaten anything. I left at 6.45 last night and I got here at 7.45 a.m. and I ate nothing. Um, it's just coffee on the road. So yeah, that was kind of rough. You can fault me if you want to. You can be mad at me if you want to, but I'm human. I'm a human being and I'm in love with him. So, you know. I don't always make the best choices. We later find out it was because she found out about his mistress, so she immediately packed up and went without a second thought to have him choose between the two of them, after not sleeping properly for several days. This was thankfully when even the most hardcore fans of Cindy began opening their eyes, and for the first time ever, Cindy's comment section was full of criticism and messages trying to get to her, rather than the usual enabling. Many of her fans, and even Cindy herself, would try to excuse this as well, but the fact is that this is the most irresponsible and horrible thing Cindy has ever done. For those who are not familiar, driving while sleep deprived, not to mention in such a sensitive mental state, equals to driving drunk. According to reports from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, drowsy driving was responsible for at least 91,000 car crashes, 50,000 injuries, and 795 deaths in 2017. By contrast, Alcohol was thought to be involved in 9,949 fatal crashes in 2017, comprising almost 30% of all fatal crashes. In addition to the dangers of falling asleep behind the wheel, drowsiness has serious effects on a driver's attention, judgment, decision-making, coordination, vigilance, and reaction time. In controlled studies where researchers were able to measure the amount of sleep deprivation, Drunk and drowsy driving both result in a similar amount of crashes. It is therefore no exaggeration to say that Cindy not only put herself and her dogs in danger, but also anyone who was on the road around her. She truly could have killed someone, yet she would continue doing what she has done for some time now, not take responsibility. Her response to the backlash was once again only about downplaying the seriousness of what she did, while Cindy once again made a dramatic exit and deleted everything on her channel and other social media. It was not because of this serious mistake, but simply the fact that she felt ran into the corner with too much criticism. When she came back, she focused more on agreeing that getting together with Andrew was stupid, since he left her once again after two weeks. Like with the racist remarks, Cindy brushed her serious mistake away like it was nothing and once again focused on her melodramatic relationship status instead. I just couldn't take it. So, I kicked him out yesterday morning. And, uh, it's really, 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 truly over. Like, completely fucking over. In fact, she did not apologize for her borderline drunk driving at all in the coming live stream, and only gave this arrogant, ignorant answer when someone asked her about it in the following stream. Between that point and the said video, not a single one of her fans pointed out her mistake, and Cindy seemed only interested in herself. Do I feel guilty for driving 40 hours for a little sleep? No. I was safe. If I felt like I was, if I felt like I was gonna endanger anybody, I would have stopped. But I was running on adrenaline. What's worse, several days later, on June 7th, 2023, she drove while live streaming on Instagram and constantly checking the chat, yet another irresponsible, stupid decision that could cost her life and the life of those around her. Distracted driving causes number of accidents and it is dangerous, yet once again, Cindy and her audience both acted like her behavior was okay, you can see in the clips how long she looks on the screen, focused on reading the comments, it is also important to say that Cindy is an inexperienced driver, she has been driving for a few months on and off, after years of not driving at all, this goes beyond her being involved in pesky, half-boiled drama or making a fool of herself on the internet, and that also leads me to another section of this video. I've been on the internet and YouTube for some time, and I don't think I've ever seen fan base as loyal, 
senselessly positive and enabling as Cindy's. I believe Cindy's audience is a large reason for why her mental illness seems to be getting worse instead of better. Though there is a phrase Cindy has became infamous for. Mental illness is not your fault, but it is your responsibility. And I have been very, very irresponsible. Neither Cindy, not her audience seems to heed by it. Cindy's fanbase seems to always rally behind her and follow her lead, no matter what. They support her reckless driving, her drinking on stream, no matter the fact that Cindy said numerous times how she's worried she's slipping into alcoholism. I get like cramps. Um. Oh, yeah, I haven't eaten anything in two days, and I've just been like drunk for two days. So. They use her BPD as an excuse for any criticism towards her. They support her irresponsible, disordered eating, and enable her in everything she does by giving her money and gifts. In her most current live streams, her audience would ask her about Andrew constantly. Even though it is clear Cindy is obsessive about him, it makes her feel worse, and isn't good for her to focus on. There is certainly a point to be made about their strange, dysfunctional, parasocial relationship. The toxicity of it is certainly seen the clearest in her goodbye stream, where almost everyone begs her to stay and to not leave YouTube. Even though it is obvious and Cindy points out herself that she has been spiraling for a while, that it has been not good for her, and causes her to actively focus on the wrong things instead of therapy and her mental health. Who are these people who support a mentally ill woman on a downward spiral in anything she does, and overlook her lies, half-truths, and inconsistent stories, as well as truly dangerous things she does? Why do they equate accountability with hate? Do they feel kinship with her because they themselves make mistakes in their life without an effort to change? and seeing her fail makes them feel better about themselves? Are they subconsciously enjoying the trauma porn Cindy's content has become? Or do they hope to see that charismatic, funny, entertaining and stable woman they used to love watching in the Pleasant Sims times? I don't want my channel to suffer anymore. I don't want to make content uh, for an audience, for a specific audience or try to get more people to watch me or like me. I want to make the content that I love, that I am able to make with joy and with my heart, where my heart is in it. While this video isn't about Andrew, and Cindy's oversharing about him and his problems and his mistakes on the internet might not even be with his permission, it is important to create a solid timeline of a mess that has been their various breakups. For those who are not familiar or might have an issue understanding, this is a short history of their relationship, from the beginning to what we knew at the time of the latest stream on June 6, 2023. While I'm not one of the people who believe Cindy cannot be trusted in absolutely anything she says, or even go as far as believing she is making up many of her issues, it is important to point out that all we know about Andrew, his actions, and their issues, is from Cindy's recollection. We have never heard Andrew's side of things, so everything that follows, while most likely true, should still be taken with a grain of salt. The way Andrew and I met is, after my first husband left me, he left me, he ran off with our landlord's girlfriend one day and went to Arizona, left me a note and I never saw him again. Um, that was the best thing that ever happened to me, even though at the time it felt like the worst thing. It, it destroyed me, but I was able to rebuild myself so much better without him. After that, I uh, had moved in with a roommate and we got a house together. And during this time, when I lived with this roommate, I was very much a recluse and a hermit. I had very low self-esteem because of what my first husband put me through, making me feel like I was a worthless piece of crap and didn't deserve love. So um, I never left the house basically. I lived on one side of the house and my roommate lived on the other. And I just, I had like a bathroom inside my bedroom and I almost never left. I would just come out and use the kitchen sometimes and go right back to my room. And I uh, worked in a call center for a while during this, but I really hated it. And after like a year, I got another job working at a call center for Barnes and Noble, but I was working from home. So I pretty much just stayed in my bedroom all the time, whether I was working or not. I was working and I was reading a lot of books. <laughs> That's about all I was doing. And I had no way to meet anybody. I did go onto some dating sites and I went on a couple of dates with these really creepy dudes that it just was never gonna work. So I pretty much gave up on that and I just thought, you know what, screw it. I'm just gonna be a crazy old cat lady and I'm never gonna find love again. Mind you, I was 24 years old at this time, but that's how I felt in my heart. And so because I never left, I would order a lot of food. I would order pizza. We didn't have like DoorDash and stuff being delivered all the time. Like you could get pizza and Chinese and that was pretty much it. You couldn't even get your groceries delivered back then. It was before all of that. So this was back in 2007. So I had ordered pizza one night. I remember exactly what I ordered. I ordered a double, a deep dish veggie pizza because I was a vegetarian at the time. So I ordered the pizza, the pizza guy comes, I open the door and Andrew is standing there. Okay, I didn't know his name was Andrew, okay? This really cute guy was standing there and it was raining outside. And I will never ever forget opening the door and seeing him and the rain behind him and the darkness and the porch light. I will never ever forget that moment the first time I ever saw him. I said, oh my God, it's raining, do you want to step in? 
and so he stepped in the house while I, because I had to write, I had to uh, sign the check. And so he just came in for just a minute and we like had a little small talk about the rain and my dog was trying to jump on him and he gave me my pizza and he left. And I never thought anything else about it. About a month later, this was a MySpace days, okay? This was when we had MySpace. I had a MySpace account, but I rarely checked it. Um, I just happened to go on there for some reason. I don't know why. And I noticed I had an unread message and I was like, that's weird. Who's messaging me? Because I knew, I didn't talk to anybody back then. So I opened my MySpace messages and I noticed that I had a message from this guy named Andrew. And it said, hey, my name's Andrew. I delivered pizza to you the other day. And I just wanted to know if you wanted to hang out sometime. And I was like, what? And oh, at the time I had really long dreadlocks. I had like almost to my waist long dreadlocks. And I was wearing, like when he came, I was wearing like a bandana over my dreadlocks. And I was wearing like some homemade pants that were just like <laughs> patched together, like falling apart. So I don't know what he freaking thought about me, but apparently he was intrigued and he messaged me, but that was like a month before and I never saw it. And I was like, oh my God, this guy messaged me like a month ago. And I thought that it was some kind of joke. Um, this is where my self-esteem was at the time. I thought, so my roommate at the time, he had friends who worked at this pizza hut, the same pizza hut that Andrew worked at. He had friends there. And I thought that they were all like conspiring to like play some cruel, sick joke on me. That's what I thought. I did not believe this was true. I thought that Andrew was way out of my league and I didn't think he would ever possibly be interested in me. And I just thought it was a joke. And I, but you know what? I said, I'm good. What if it's not a joke? So I'm going to try. So I messaged him back and I gave him my phone number and he ended up calling me and we instantly hit it off. And we like had so much in common. He was four years younger than me. So he was 20 years old at this time and I was 24. Andrew was very mature for his age, okay? He always has been. So we started talking on the phone and then we started talking on the phone every day. And then he came over to my house and I made him dinner. That was like the first time we got together. He came over to my house and I made him dinner and I pulled out all the stops and I made like everything that I knew how to make, which wasn't very much because I wasn't vegetarian. So I just made him a bunch of carbs. It was like, I made like biscuits and squash and macaroni and cheese, <laughs> but he said it was really good and he liked it. And so we hung out that night and we like watched a movie and it was really nice. We really, really got along well. So after that, the first like real date we went on is we went to go see the movie I Am Legend in theaters, <laughs> which was really fun. And then we just sort of started going out like almost every night we would see each other. Um, um, and, or we, if we didn't see each other, we would talk on the phone. Uh, we just have been inseparable ever since then. Uh, we have never been apart since then. I, I just feel so lucky. It's like during that time in my life, I had completely given up on trying to find a partner. And it, I feel like the universe just delivered him right to my door. And I could not believe it because I never would have attempted to like contact him or date him or anything. Oh, and if you're wondering how he found me on MySpace, um, he just looked up my name from the order, <laughs> which I know might sound a little creepy in retrospect, but you know, he had to give it a shot. He liked me and he had to give it a shot. And uh, he probably thought that I completely ignored him or ghosted him since I didn't respond back for a month. <laughs> um, anyway, it, it just, it went really well. And then, so we dated for a we moved in together after just a couple of months. Well, he actually starts like staying at my house every night. And then I was like, why don't you just move in and just get your stuff? Cause he was at, he was living with his dad at the time. I was like, just get your stuff and just bring it all over here. You stay here every night anyway. So we moved in together and we lived together. Now I was still married during this time because my husband had ran off and I had no way, I didn't know where he was to get a divorce. And I couldn't afford a lawyer at the time. After Andrew and I had been together for a couple of years and we were like much more financially stable, we got enough money to hire a lawyer and we had him tracked down and, and served papers for the divorce. And I finally got the divorce. And once that happened, Andrew and I were able to get married. But like, we were already like, he was already my husband in my heart, you know? It, and the other guy was not even close. Um, but we just had to get everything legally done. So we did that in 2012. We started dating in January 2008 and we got married in uh, May of 2012. And At first, Cindy and Andrew's relationship seems healthy. The story of them meeting up is romantic. And they spend a lot of time together sharing their hobbies. So... This morning, I thought everything was going fine. Andrew, um, we were hanging out, we went out to breakfast, we had a great morning together, at least I thought, and he left to go to the music store. And after about an hour, I got a text. It said that he has cheated on me several times um, during our marriage, and I never knew. <laughs> and that he could not live with that guilt, and he doesn't think that I should forgive him, and I agree. But Andrew has a problem. Um, I don't really feel it's my place to talk about it, so I won't, but we'll just say it involves... I can't even say what it involves. I'm sure you can guess. That's something that we've had an issue with for a long time, but I never knew that it went into the real world. I never knew that he had sex with another woman, and that is what he told me. That it happened right before I got pregnant. Well, he slept with at least two other women that I that I know of now. He left all his shit here. All of his clothes are here, and his guitars, everything he owns is here. He left with literally the clothes on his back. That is fucking avoidant personality disorder is what Andrew has, and it is very apparent to me. Like, almost a relief that I know for sure. I know the truth for sure now, because I knew I didn't know the whole truth before. I knew there were things I, that he wasn't telling me. 
and I feel a great relief that he told me the whole truth that he had slept with other women during our marriage and did other things that I won't share here. Um, we did go to marriage counseling one time many years ago for this, the same issue, although I didn't know about any physical cheating. It was more just like online stuff, if you know what I'm saying. In the second My Life Is Over video, we found out Andrew abandoned Cindy and all his things after settling her in a new apartment in Arkansas, telling her he's been cheating on her with random Tinder dates. Cindy also reveals he has avoidant personality disorder and that they've been having issues with infidelity in the past, albeit only online. And I kicked Tinder out yesterday. I packed up all of his shit, I threw it out, and I told him to get the fuck out. And he did. He's been lying to me about everything. Every I think that he's a pathological liar and I don't know how I didn't realize that for 15 years, but um, he's got somebody else. He's got somebody else who is younger than me. She's in her 20s. <laughs> She's fucking 20s. I've known for a while about her. I just like didn't want it to be true, you know? So like for the past two weeks, he's acted like he wanted to be here. Like we actually got him into therapy locally and um, he was telling me all this stuff about how he wanted to be with me and um, how he loved me. But it was all just bullshit. And he just kept going back and forth between us. And then I guess he finally made his decision that it's not me. So I made him show me his phone. And there was a text on there where he told her that he loved her. So I told him to get the fuck out. Yeah, his family knows about her and they didn't tell me. Yes. Yes. So I'm going to tell you guys the truth that I didn't tell you before. When I went to Colorado on a whim, it was because I found out about her. So after my last live stream, I found out in a very in a, in a very painful way. And I just could not control myself. I just packed all my shit up and I just drove up there. And he came to see me and he said he loved me and he wanted to be with me and he was choosing me. All we did when he was here, literally all we did when he was here is go out and drink. And like, I should have known something was wrong. I mean, I did know, I did know. We would fight, and we would go drink, and then we would make up, and then we would do it again the next day, for two weeks. He told me that he's getting rid of that phone that he had, and um, he said, he told me that he's letting go, and he's going to his new life. Also, here's an another thing, the Tinder cheating was not real. He didn't do that. Um, he was having an affair with this woman for a year, and I don't know why he told me that he just went on a bunch of Tinder dates or something, like, I guess to lessen the pain for me or something. Like, um, he didn't want to tell me, you know, that he was having, like, a real relationship with somebody else. Did the other woman know that he was going between the two of you? Yeah, he did. He knew. She knew, she knew everything. She knew everything. She knew he was married. She knew all of it. There were red flags ten years ago that I ignored. It wasn't anything like this, but it was enough. In the stream following the reckless drive to Colorado vlog, things unravel even more. Cindy reveals Andrew lied about the dates but instead has had a mistress, who she knew about for a time. They stayed together for two weeks after returning to Arkansas, until Cindy kicked Andrew out, or he chose to leave and be with his mistress. Cindy is a bit unclear on that and keeps changing that point. There's something I haven't told you. And I really don't feel like I can do any kind of healing moving forward type of journey on this channel if I don't tell you the entire truth. She's pregnant. And she's not just pregnant, she's due in three weeks. <laughs> so four months after we lost August, he impregnated this woman, four months. And his family's all excited for the baby and just welcoming her in and they've known, they've known this too, for, they've known this for four months. And they all just discarded me because I couldn't give them a baby. That's what it feels like. So I'm just gonna tell you a little bit of what he told me, he said, I'm sorry, but I want to be there for my second son full time. It's a boy. <laughs> By the way, in November, we were actively trying to have a baby. In November, December, January, he knew. He knew she was pregnant while we were actively trying to have a baby. By the way, I can't tell you what's best for you, but I can see that I've hurt you too much for us to repair this relationship. I wanted to. I wanted everything to work out. But you need someone who won't remind you of this, and I can't let another child go from my life. He's not August, and he never will be. 
I wouldn't want him to be. But I have to give him the best life I can. I'm sorry, but I love her as well. I love both you and her, and I can't live like this anymore. He said, I'm so sorry. I've always known she was pregnant since November. And I've been trying to play both sides for so long. I wanted both futures. I don't know what to say other than ever since I found out she was pregnant, I felt drawn to the child. I've been afraid I would not be able to resist going to him. And in the end, it turned out that I can't forsake him. I'm so sorry. I have to tell you. I love you. I'm letting go. As if things have not been dramatic enough, in another stream, Cindy revealed that Andrew's mistress, who he lives with now in Colorado, is three weeks away from giving birth to their son, which is just another blow and another way he has shattered their relationship beyond repair. The entire way Andrew went from a quiet, shy, but loving husband we love to see in Cindy's vlog, to an abhorrent mess of a human being who would constantly lie, cheat, toy with people, and make incredibly unhinged choices, is mind-blowing to witness. No matter mine or anyone's criticisms of her, as long as all she says about Andrew is true, what she has gone through in the last few months would be hell for anyone, not to mention a mentally ill woman whose disorder makes her cling to a favorite person and base her worth one her partner. But this especially makes it so important that she has a supportive network around her, who help her heal, instead of enabling her and supporting her self-destructing habits for their own entertainment. Either way, this is what we know with certainty, Cindy is a 40-year-old woman with serious issues, who instead of finding support in her family or friends, and even in patient which would most certainly benefit her, relies on validation from internet strangers and monetizes her own mental issues, which is most certainly not something that will lead her to quick recovery. While she has abused her husband of 15 years herself in the past, the abuse and hurt Andrew has put her through in the recent months, coupled with the previous traumatic loss of their child, has not helped Cindy either. While no one can expect her to get over her 15-year-old marriage in a blink of an eye, Cindy often uses her enabling audience to stall her own progress, to receive validation she craves, and even with dozens of people giving her helpful advice, oftentimes from their own experience, and seem to have her best interest at heart. From the history of Cindy's internet presence, we can see that she has no changed or grown in the previous several years at all. She still runs away from responsibility, which makes one question if the alleged support and validation she is getting benefits her in any way. Her lies and twisting of the truth cannot be excused by her BPD alone, and neither can be her lack of accountability. Cindy went from entertaining Sims YouTuber to a public spectacle. And while she deserves sympathy and everyone's wish should be for her to heal and rebuild her life, surviving in the wild wild west of the internet is not easy, and one needs to have not only tough skin, but also be able to take responsibility for their mistakes. Whether you watch Cindy hoping to see her thrive or with a popcorn by your side, waiting for another teary, dramatic trash fire of an irresponsible choice. Life plus Cindy is a fascinating study of human psyche and how quickly things in one's life can derail, as well as how no one is truly who they make themselves out to be, indeed. I think that manipulation has become such a part of what I do to other people that I don't even really understand or know if that's what I'm actually doing. I think I'm always on some level manipulating people. I know I've told you that I've been I've been trying to be more independent and all that bullshit, but it's a lie because I always knew that he was going to come back and deal with anything I couldn't deal with. I lied. I've decided to add this short section at the end of the video with some actual example of some of Cindy's inconsistencies, as well as some smaller things she has been criticized for. These can be considered nitpicks to some, so I included them here at the end and will leave you to make your own opinion on them. Um, he's sick. He has a real fucking problem, and I hope he gets help for it. I really do. He, he had a lot of time to try to change to get into therapy to fix himself and he didn't do that. He just wants to continue the way he is, I guess. Andrew has asked me to get therapy multiple times throughout the year, but years, but I thought that I was doing okay, that I had things under control. I see now that's not true, that I am completely fucking off the rails. Jack and I worked together at a call center many, many years ago, back in about 2006, 2007. Um, this was a situation where 
this guy and I, we were in the same like training group and we sat next to each other. And this was when the call center first opened so we didn't have a high call volume. Um, so we had a lot of downtime to just sit there and hang out together. And we had ended up having so much in common. It was like the universe just put us together for some reason. And over several months, we kind of fell in love with each other. Um, we spent so much time together. We spent like 40 hours a week together just hanging out. And we'd take like two calls an hour and we would just hang out and like play games and chat and talk and stuff. I started to say chat and talk at the same time, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I kind of like fell in love with this guy and I know that he also fell in love with me because he told me that, but he had a girlfriend at the time and I didn't want to be a homewrecker because I'm just not that kind of person. So I told him that, you know, before anything could happen between us, he would have to, you know, break up with his girlfriend because I don't want to, I don't want to be the other woman, you know? Well, he said that he was going to leave her. He was not happy with her and at the last minute decided he couldn't do it and broke my heart he couldn't hurt her like that and um it really broke my heart we ended up losing touch with each other and he was just like my unrequited love like the one who got away from me like all these years i've always thought of him we've talked to each other a couple times when andrew and i were having a rough patch back in 2013 2014 but anyway i always loved this guy in her second my life is over video cindy understandably hurts over finding out andrew's infidelity she mentions how she has always been loyal and never even looked at another man while they were together. In later videos, she explains how she could never imagine being the quote other woman. The thing is, most people somehow overlook the fact that at the very end of said video, Cindy herself tells the story of her relationship, if it could be called that, with a taken man. While she said she wanted him to leave his partner before starting anything physical because she did not want to be a home wrecker, the fact remains that she knew the man she was emotionally involved with was not single and she did have an emotional affair with him, making her once again a hypocrite. Oh, I just got a weird ass message that said, Cindy, Andrew got you a gift from Instacart. You've got a gift from Andrew, and it has a little note that says making up for the past. And it doesn't tell me what the gift is. I think it's flowers. I think he's fucking sending me flowers. And why? Why would he just do that out of the blue? He has, I haven't talked to him in days. In the vlog from April 15th, 2023, Cindy received flowers from Andrew out of nowhere, after, by her own account, not talking to him for several days as she has been trying to get over him and keep no contact. The thing is, this story changes in the following video. Instead of Cindy holding up the no contact and Andrew suddenly sending flowers, she reveals Andrew has been the one not talking to her, while she has been sending messages to him for two days to talk to him, proving once again that oftentimes, what Cindy says cannot be entirely trusted. The whole like flower thing, oh god. <sighs> I almost wish I didn't publish that now. Cause yeah, I was very upset about the flowers because he hadn't talked to me for two days and then he just sent those and I was like, what the fuck? You know, what the fuck is this? And during those two days, I was telling him that I want to talk to him and he was avoiding me and then he sent me flowers and that was very upsetting to me. This is more of a conspiracy theory coming from the infamous manic vlog of Cindy driving 14 hours to Colorado to see Andrew. In the original vlog, the story goes as such. The night has taken a strange turn, and I am stranded at the Circle K with a flat tire at 3 o'clock in the morning. But guess who came to help me? Yeah. Thank you, Andrew. Well, we got the old tire taken off, and let me show you guys what I did to it. Where is it? That's the hole that uh, got taken out of the tire. Many people found the story questionable. Cindy once again driving alone, still tired, in the middle of the night for some reason aside, the tire did not look right to some. While no one can know what happened, many users posted their opinions, even asking those around them who are experienced with cars, who seem to confirm that the tire looks slashed instead of like something that would happen by driving into something or a blowout. People are saying you slashed your own tire. Oh my god. I hit a curb. Which I didn't want to say because I knew people were going to be like, You're out there driving at 3 a.m. You want it? Okay. Did I tell you guys what really happened? He was trying to leave her. Okay? It was 3 o'clock in the morning. Alright. Here's what happened. I'm going to tell you the truth because it doesn't fucking matter now. This is why I was out driving at 3 o'clock in the morning. He 
got off work. So this, so this day, he had to go to work one more day when I was in Colorado and he was going to leave with me. He was going to come back to the hotel with me and he was going to leave with me the next day. That's what we did. But he, when he got off work, she was waiting outside his work for him and freaked out and started following him around. And I was like, I'm coming over there. I'm coming. I'm coming up there. So I left the hotel at like two o'clock in the morning and started going to try to find this bullshit. And I was exhausted and this was a very stupid thing to do. Okay, you don't have to chastise me, I know. But I, I had been sleeping for a couple hours, so I did have some rest. And I hit a curb and it busted out my tire. And then I was stuck in the circle K and then Andrew had to come and fix the tire after he finally lost her. Even though Cindy refuses and laughs at the theory that she slashes her own tire, her explanation actually makes the theory somewhat more believable. Not only was Cindy clearly not in her right state of mind and barely rested at the time, but a point can easily be made that she felt like she was losing Andrew, and worried his mistress might perhaps convince him to not leave with her if she doesn't find them, so she slashed her tire to force Andrew to go to her and help her, pulling him closer, again, I will leave this up to you, and it most certainly is just a theory, I also feel compelled to say that some people provided their experience confirming that it looks like a genuine tire damaged from hitting a curb, so take this proof as you will. There is some valid criticism about Cindy not giving her dogs the best care she could, to clarify, she is most certainly not neglecting or abusing her dogs, but she is also not giving them all they need. For starters, she reveals in the video from April 20, 2023 that the dogs needed professional care because of how bad the mats behind their ears got. They are beyond past the need for grooming, like they need a haircut so bad, that the soonest I could get them in anywhere in town was in two weeks. Um, and this morning I had to cut a bunch of mats out of Bella's ears because her ears get all, she gets mats behind her ears. And I cannot find her dog brush either, so I'm gonna have to buy a new dog brush so I can, so I can brush out their ears so they don't get matted. It's, having a shih tzu is a lot of work, <laughs> you gotta keep their hair cut or they get matted so easily. While it is understandable Cindy is not on top of everything with the way her life and mental health has been spiraling recently, Taking care of one's pets or children is never up for question, even when in such a bad state, since they depend on their owner slash parent, with Cindy repeating often that her dogs are the reason she is still here and her only motivation, it is concerning that she not only does not brush them enough, considering the breed gets matted easily, but she also does not give them enough exercise. And now to reward the dogs I am taking them out on a little walk, because they were so good at the vet, so I'll let them explore in the woods a little bit. And then we're going to go in and try to give them that uh, flea and tick medicine. Oh my god, Bella. Getting caught in the woods. Only taking them outside of her apartment to the grass for quote-unquote walks. While I'm aware such small breed does not require mile-long, strenuous exercise, they deserve better. In fact, even before the breakup, we have only ever seen Cindy take the dogs for an actual, proper walk with Andrew. I know, I wish I could date women. I think my life would be easier. Another stupid nitpick proving that people get offended by anything these days to some, and an ignorant comment to others. Either way, Cindy's throwaway line was pretty tone deaf. It is something someone who is gay or bi hears from straight people often, and the notion that the same sex relationships are somehow easier or less toxic than heterosexual ones is nonsense, especially when you take into account homophobia and general social implications. Pretty sure he was about to be tested for ADHD, I'm pretty sure he has ADHD. So he's very impulsive because of that, and he will just leave a job, he just doesn't give a shit, he will just leave a job and go get another one. Yeah, he is addicted to dopamine pleasures, and I think that's, I think that he has ADHD, and I think that's a lot of his problem. In another tone deaf, offensive mess of a throwaway line, Cindy basically implies that Andrew has cheated because he apparently has ADHD, which caused several people to be offended and hurt, understandably since having ADHD does not make one in any way more likely to cheat or go around doing similar crazy things like Andrew has been. We just got out of the orchid show and it was so cool, oh my gosh. The orcas were so neat, yeah. weren't they, Andrew? Yeah, they were incredible. It was really fun. <laughs> it was really fun. I think that was the coolest thing we saw today. Yeah, my favorite thing today was the Kraken roller coaster in the orchid show. In 2021, Cindy and Andrew went for a holiday to the Orlando Sea World and published two vlogs about it. This was long after the Blackfish documentary, and when it's already been very much known publicly how incredibly dark and shocking the treatment of animals in Sea World is, and how bad these parks are in general. Animals in cramped tanks, drugging, abuse, by a mere short search, 
One can find all the horrible things happening in all SeaWorld parks. Not only does Cindy say the Orca show was one of her favorite experiences, but in the common Cindy manner, instead of admitting her fault and apologizing, she reacted to the comments from people trying to educate her and pointing out how disappointing her support of the place was by deleting the video and never mentioning it again.